Welcome in, everybody, to Fantasy Pros. This is the Fantasy Football Podcast. It is me, Joey P. Joe P. Zabia with me is my boy, D-Bro, Derek Brown, a.k.a. the King of Bros. And it's waiver wire time for week six. We're going to tell you the guys to pick up, the guys to drop, and how much to spend on them in those fab leagues. And before we get going here, Derek Brown, another disappointing showing from the Cincinnati Bengals. I know the offensive line still not looking good. Joe Burrow still taking shots. Are the Bengals going to turn this offense around anytime soon? Uh, not if Zach Taylor <laughs> keeps being a donkey, they're not. Good mm, lord, good point. man. I get Kick so the sick field of goal, Zach. Going. Kick the field goal. But what do we know? Uh, it, it Look, I, I'll say this, Joe. Maybe we're not ready to, you know, go run and hide or press the alarm button and wait for the cavalry, but it, it's getting close, man. Like, they're not mm-hmm. having any kind of answer to too high safety looks. T. Higgins is now banged up. He barely played in that game. He left the game with the ankle injury. I, Joe Mixon is one of the most inefficient running backs in the NFL. If we're not close to panic, we're getting, I mean, it's, it's at the precipice. I'll say that. Yeah, and it's a tougher schedule this year for them. It's not like the, mm-hmm. their playoff schedule, too, for those pieces you've got in Cincinnati. I mean, they play Tampa, New England, and Buffalo. Well, those are defenses that are pretty decent. So I don't know, man. It's definitely a dicey situation there. Mixon's has uh, underwhelmed. Jamar Chase is underwhelmed, you know, catching a lot of balls. But, you know, 50 yards ain't going to get it done there when you have the number one pick there in your draft. So, look, uh, Cincinnati Bengals, they're on notice. We're – we're hopefully cautiously optimistic. Maybe there's one more Bengal left to pick up, though. We'll tell you later in the show. But before we get going here, we got to talk about the sleeper waiver wire pickup of the week. And, of course, this show is brought to you by the Sleeper app. If you haven't already moved all your leagues over there, do it. I'm telling you, the Sleeper is the best. It is the easiest app to manage all your fantasy football teams there in one spot. You get all the updates. You get all the news. Everything there. Sleeper rocks. I love Sleeper. I try to get all my leagues there. So my Sleeper waiver wire pickup of the week is clearly... Kenneth Walker. And yes, he is rostered in 59% of leagues already. And uh, yes, you're going to have to empty the tank for him potentially at this point. And uh, look, it's hard not to think that this guy with the way that the Seattle Seahawks want to run the football with Rashad Penny out, no longer an issue, that Ken Walker is going to become potentially already starting next week, a low end RB1. And I know people don't want to hear that noise necessarily, but it's not a hot take. We're in bye weeks. He is a guy that you know this team is committed to the run. You know what kind of college career he had. You know he's a strong, aggressive runner. We all thought he would have gone sooner than he did in the draft. Debro, you can speak more to the college profile if you like, but let's talk about the college profile for those who are still trying to figure out the value of Kenneth Walker. And let's talk about the value that he has on the free agent market. It's still over 40% of leagues. Look, the fact that he's even out there this much, people need to be, and I already got some questions on Twitter. It was like, I got $85 left in the fab clip. Do I blow it? And I'm like, you empty the clip. Let me get this really, really straight and clear for people. You empty the clip. Because mm-hmm. Kenneth Walker is exactly what league winners look like, Joe. His mm-hmm. elusivity, his metrics, even like last week before the big run, we're looking at a running back that's top 16 in yards after contact per attempt and breakaway rate. He is the fourth highest PFF elusive rating amongst all running backs with 15 or more carries. You and I were on Sunday before we got off the show, after we got off the live stream, we're going through (laughs) running back numbers and we're like, man, who could really pop? And I said, there are two sleeping monsters. One is CEH. People know about him. They still don't want to come to terms with it. Mm -hmm. And number two, we talked about this, Joe. Kenneth Walker was a sleeping giant. People still don't want to come to terms with the fact that Geno Smith is playing out of his mind. And now (laughs) Kenneth Walker steps forward. I just updated my rest of season rankings. He Mm -hmm. is RB15. And to be honest, I could go even higher. Like you combine the, the, how good the Seattle offense is playing and how talented Kenneth Walker is. He handled 100% of the opportunities out of that backfield as far as carries go after Penny went out. He is what a league winner looks like, Joe. So yes, spend it all, get him on your team. Yeah, I'm with D-Bro. And it's unfortunate that he had that huge run. I mean, it's fortunate in one way because it's like, hey, look how great he did. And, you know, he's a talent. We're excited for him. But it's unfortunate for fantasy managers because if he had had a lesser game, maybe it didn't have to quite empty the clip. Mm -hmm. 
but I'm kind of where Debro is. It's like, go get this guy because there's not going to be a lot of guys on teams. Pacheco might be that one guy. We'll talk about him later, too. If something happens to a running back, Rashad White's another guy we're going to talk about on the show today. But this one's happening now. And if you can yeah. get him now. And the funny thing was, you know, I, I I was very much into trading for Rashad Penny. I thought this would be a maybe a down week after the big week. People get frustrated because you looked at the schedule. He had the Giants. He had the, the Arizona Cardinals twice coming up. He had the Chargers coming up who basically say, come run the football on me all day long. <laughs> and Debro, now all of that Rashad Penny love I had gets transferred to Kenneth Walker. And now everybody needs to be adding Kenneth Walker if you can. And look. In terms of trade situation too, his trade value is very high right now. Is his trade value higher than his keep value? No, I was just gonna say, I was like, this is one of those opportunities where you buy high. You even yeah. say, look, I'm going to pay the piper. I'm gonna sit here and we're gonna pony up because that's the type of upside. Like, what are we talking about with the state of the running back position just in general, Joe? You've mm -hmm. got, I mean, after the top, what, five or six guys? It's a wasteland, and it's it's injuries, it's underperformance. Like, even the Joe Mixons of the world, the Najee Harris's of the world, that are getting all the work, they're not doing anything with it. So, no. we're talking about, like, Kenneth Walker, if he really, really plays well, if Geno continues to ball out, and this Seattle offense is way better than anything we thought it was going to be this year, like, Kenneth Walker could be a top 12 running back that you're getting off the waiver wire or in trades right now. Like... I think some like at this point, you could be buying high and somebody could be laughing in the in your league and saying, <laughs> "Look what I just got for Kenneth Walker." And at the end of the year, it looks like I wish wow, I had Kenneth I Walker. I, 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 I should have got. Would you I trade Jonathan it. Taylor and the the enigma that is the Colts offense for Brees Hall and Kenneth Walker rest of season? Yes. Yes, I think I would. I would too. I know that I sounds would. like crazy talk. There's no, a trend in the NFL not. the last few seasons too, whether it be David Montgomery strong finish a couple years ago, J.K. Mm -hmm. Dobbins strong finish a couple years ago. Uh, let's go to Jonathan Taylor, DeAndre Swift. There's been a bunch of guys, young running backs in their first or second yep. year that come on late and they figure it out and they get all the touches and defenses are worn down by then and they start to really pop. This is a trend of these cheap, younger running backs that if you are paying attention, and Brees Hall is already on that path right now. We talked about it, we've been talking about it for weeks, trying to get people to trade for him, hopefully you did. But Kenneth Walker fits that bill. There's a couple other guys I think still out there that might fit that bill too, I'm telling you. This yep. is where the trend the last couple of years is going. So we all agree Kenneth Walker, we all gonna agree, you know, you gotta spend as much as you possibly can to get him. So let's go past him now. Let's talk about somebody else. Who is number two on your running back list to add for week six? All right. So somehow he's still out there, Joe. I don't know why, but he is. I know you're out on this, so I know we're going to get out some on the Broncos. This, this is it. a general I, note. I, get it. I am done. I, get it. I wipe my hand. I'm like that dealer in Vegas <laughs> where they go like this and then they get up from the table. I'm out. <laughs> I get it. I get it. But Mike Boone is still out there in 44% of leagues. Uh, well, actually, he's out there in 50% of leagues. He's only rostered in 44%. Um, that math checks out. Yeah, Mike Boone. So 60% of the time, it works, it all, works the time. all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think Mike Boone, we could see him take over this backfield. Melvin Gordon, I mean, we heard rumblings out of Denver. If Javante Williams never went out, then baby Melvin Gordon is on the street. He puts the ball on the turf again. Mike Boone, it could be the Mike Boone show. And he's got good matchups over the next three weeks. He's got the Chargers, Jacksonville Jaguars, the Jets. Two of those three you can run on really well. He made the most of his opportunities last week, Joe. I mean, we're talking about a guy who got 85 total yards on 10 touches. He ran almost as many routes and he had 3.8 yards of the contact per attempt. So as bad as the Broncos offense has looked, if he's going to be the guy, I mean, again, he could be a top 24 running back down the stretch, and we're talking about fresh legs, and we've seen the talent. We know the athleticism that Mike Boone has. Yeah, uh, look, I get it. And and for people <laughs> saying, oh, Joe's overreacting to the Denver Broncos. No, I'm not. I feel like the Joker. Oh, like, I'm not. Bad. I'm not crazy. You need two things in the NFL. You need good head coaching and game planning, and you need good quarterback play. You're getting neither out of the Denver <laughs> Broncos. So listen to me now and believe me later. I'm telling that's why I'm out on the Broncos. I, look, Debro's right. Statistically speaking, Mike Boone certainly is a guy worth adding. But I am out on the Broncos because if you don't have those two things in the NFL, you don't have an offense. So right now, they don't. So I'm out till further notice. It's uh, it's week six. That's it. Like there's no more, there's no more wait and see. Mm -hmm. Okay. You've only got so many, you only got seven weeks or so to get yourself into the playoffs. We gotta make sure we get this right. 
starts now. All right. Uh, well, it started, what should I say? It started in February, but you know, it's still, it starts right now again. <laughs> Let's go on to my guy, number two, Rashad White. He is rostered in 46% of leagues right now on Sleeper. Uh, I'm willing to go about 10% for him, uh, maybe even more. So roughly half the leagues, he's still available. And I know some people say, well, he had five rushes for 14. Why are you getting excited about that? It's not even so much excited about that as much as he's getting the targets. He's gotten nine targets over the last two weeks. We talk about the value of targets at the running back position. Not to mention, if something did happen to Leonard Fournette, an older running back, Rashad White is another guy that could see a huge bump in his value, right? With those five rushes go to 15 very quickly. The five targets go to eight potentially. So I'm not saying that you have to empty the clip. I'm not saying you have to go crazy, but I would be aggressive on Rashad White. We're talking 10%. You have to go to 15 if you're really fighting, you're really in a bad spot at RB. I'm willing to do that. He's got Pittsburgh coming up, then Carolina, then Baltimore, then the Rams and Seattle, then the bye in week 11. So you've got him these next couple weeks too, where you might have some other guys on buys. And in full PPR formats, you might be able to get by with him. Again, I think as a player that's continuously figuring things out and starting to ingratiate himself into this offense, D, what are your thoughts on Rashad White? I like the call. I mean, before we got on here, I told you I was like, he's Tampa Bay's version of AJ Dillon. He's getting mm. worked in. Anything happens to Leonard Fournette, we could see it could be the Ken Walker situation. You're getting ahead of the buck. And I'm not saying in a forecasting injuries, but we also have to do give some credence to the fact that Lenny's had multiple injuries of the last few seasons. Like that's still in his range of outcomes. He's not a young running back. They're trying to lessen his load to keep him healthy, but still, I mean, we've seen this story play out with Fournette in multiple seasons. So I think that getting ahead of the curb, as well as you're already getting a player, Joe, where you're talking about the pass game usage, we care about targets, you're already getting a player that could be a low end flex for you. Like mm -hmm. right now, right. It, just standalone value. If he gets all of the work, if anything happens to Fournette, again, we're putting him up in the league winner category. Agreed. All right, let's get to your third guy at the RB position. Who are you looking to add this week in week six? Yeah, and I'll, I'll backtrack just for one second because I know uh, when we went through the whole entire Mike Boone spiel, I didn't give how much I was going to be paying for him. It'd be about 10 to 15%. I'll look at okay. him in, in the same category as Rashad White. But on to the next guy, Eno Benjamin makes the list. And a lot of this comes down to, and as we are recording this, we're still waiting to hear injury updates with Arizona because James Conner left last week's game with a rib issue. We don't know have, have details as of right now what that is exactly, but also Darrell Williams left the game with a knee issue. So mm -hmm. if these two running backs are going to be out, I'm telling you, you need to go spend five to seven percent on Eno Benjamin, especially if you're in a situation where you need somebody to start this week and without the clarity, maybe waivers run and we don't get updates on these guys. Here's the thing, if we get updates after waivers run and you get him for cheap and then we get news, okay, one or both of these running right. backs are gonna miss multiple weeks, then you got him for pennies as opposed to paying up for some of these other running backs. So you need to be ahead of the curve with these guys. And I love Eno considering what he did last week. He got uh, 11 touches, 53 total yards. He got into the end zone, he ran 25 routes. And the, the upcoming schedule is really nice over the next two to three weeks, Joe. Like, Seattle gives up everything to running backs on the ground mm -hmm. and in the passing game. Then you have New Orleans. Okay, tougher matchup. Then he gets the Vikings. The Vikings have been amongst the league's worst run defenses to this point. So we're looking at two smash matchups in the next three weeks. And if injury clarity comes out, you could be getting him super cheap and ahead of the curve, man. Yeah, look, I, I definitely like the call there with Eno Benjamin. You make a lot of sense there. And Debro is also making a really good case about being proactive instead of reactive. I would absolutely you know, take that <laughs> into account with this. And he might be a chip that you could add if you've got space to add him and then flip to somebody who needs him more than you do. Mm -hmm. You know, always be looking to move the waiver wire. I don't like it when teams get complacent. Maybe you're five and oh, you're four and one. You're not paying attention to the waiver wire. That's when mistakes happen always look to be adding talent to your roster when you can speaking of that now i don't know what he's going to do tonight but again the kenneth walker situations kind of uh scared me straight and should scare everybody else straight too isaiah pacheco rostered in just 36 percent of leagues right now i just think he is the more explosive back in this backfield ch has been excellent not taking anything away from him okay but this is like the insurance policy especially if you are a good team right now where it's like okay 
can I add some players for nothing to my waiver wire? And I've got a wide receiver who fits that same bill too. Can I add them now? And what does their workload look like? Say, I don't know, end of November, beginning of December. The calculus changes quite a bit from the beginning of the season to the middle to the end in the NFL. It's something you have to be prepared for this war of attrition. It takes its toll on good teams and bad teams alike. And I do believe this is a time where you add Pacheco, you probably have to spend what, 3%? You know, the yeah. problem is if he has a good game on Monday Night Football tonight, that might change things. But you're starting to see him, once again, start to work a little bit here and there. I think it's a player they're very high on. The fact that they are getting him some work this early in the season. And next week's a huge game against Buffalo. And let me tell you, it is all hands on deck against the Buffalo Bills next week. That is going to be a fun game. Uh, real quick, I know we kind of mentioned the main guys here. Um, we've got Pacheco, Rashad White, Walker, Boone, Eno, Benjamin. Anybody else, you know, still popping off to you? You know, I see in most leagues too. We're still over now 50% for Brian Robinson, which I think is nuts. <laughs> like, nuts. I, it's just, I don't get that one. We've talked about him enough, though. Anybody yes. else maybe lower on the trough too, speculation wise? No, I think that kind of covers it as far as like our spec today. ads yeah. and stuff like that. I mean, I, the fact that I, I love the fact that you bring up Brian Robinson because Joe, what, what have I been screaming to everybody? I, I told Whoa. people all of in us. our Discord, like I, all of us, yes. But like, here's the thing: we all said to be ahead of the curve. We're still preaching this to people. Like it was like, okay, after everything that happened with Brian Robinson, he's gonna come back early. He's going to probably not be limited when he comes back. He just led the team in carries this week straight out the gate. What do you think is going to happen when he's not on a snap count? The fact that he's even out there in less than 60% of leagues, like, it's it's insane that he's not rostered more. I, I, I cannot wrap my brain around it, Joe. Yeah, uh, I'm with you 100%. Let's uh, move on to the wide receivers here. Before we do, I want to remind everybody, the waiver assistant is another tool we have besides a podcast, besides Discord and all the other stuff we do for you to sit there, figure out the guys to add to your lineups, to your rosters. It's part of my playbook, the most incredible suite of tools you'll ever see in one condensed spot. Fantasy Pros does it, does it well. So Waiver Assistant will show you the guys to add, which one's going to have the best schedule, the best projections to help your rosters. And you can check that out at fantasypros.com slash my playbook, of course. But remember, only premium subscribers get the most out of the Waiver Assistant. So if you're not currently a subscriber, not only do I have to question your choices in life, but this is your opportunity to go do it and get it and actually play some more football and make some wagers and have some fun. Go to fantasypros.com slash offers, make a small deposit in one of our partner sites. And just like that, you get six free premium months to check it out. You don't have to spend any extra money. You get my playbook, all of the upgraded features, including waiver assistant to help you figure things out. So go check that out again. My playbook over at fantasypros.com slash my playbook, fantasypros.com slash offers, or download the my playbook app from Apple or Google play wide receiver D bro. Who's the number one dude to add to the roster this week for you? This feels like the Brian Robinson of wide receivers. We keep telling people to pick him up. I don't understand it. He is rostered in 62% of sleeper leagues, but here's the thing. He there are a lot of other formats where he's below 50% and even in sleeper, he should not be this low. Period. There should not be a wide receiver that is out on the waiver wire that is going to see close to a 30% target share ever, Joe. Ever mm -hmm. ever ever. And I don't care that he was injured. Ever. Jacoby Myers is a player that we've seen has immense talent. He has popped off in multiple weeks, weeks one to two, Joe. 29% target share, 35% target per route run rate. He was the wide receiver 21 fantasy points per game, and he comes back this last week and he ate Mike Hughes alive. He had a 38% target share, and I didn't know that we needed Bailey Zappi under center to unlock Jacoby Myers' touchdown potential, but apparently that's what happened. So he gets into the end zone. He goes over 100 receiving yards. The fact that he is out there is egregious to me. I think he's worth like 10 to 15% of your fab. You can get a little more aggressive because we're looking at a wide receiver that could be a wide receiver three, maybe a wide receiver two for the rest of the season. And I know that sounds crazy, but this type of volume, you should never see this on the waiver wire, Joe. You're right. You're 100 percent right. It's the injuries that have kept him. I think you know people say that it's a lack of touchdown upside. He's my number one wide receiver to add to. 
Um, again, seven for eight, uh, 111 with the touchdown. Now, the touchdown is not something you can count on with Jacoby Myers and when Mac Jones comes back, and he is coming back. Bailey Zappi's not going to take them there forever. Look, he's got Cleveland, Chicago, the Jets, Indianapolis. You know, those are not the toughest matchups on the board necessarily. Maybe, you know, those a are little beautiful. trickier than those you think. Those are beautiful. But no, I, I think I, they're I really good those. for where he works and, yes. and where he is on the field. That's yes. to me where I like them. So I'm sure you are too. The bye week is 10 for him. Uh, I'm not quite as aggressive with the, the money that Debro is, but look, he's only available in 40% of leagues right now on Sleeper. I do believe that you could probably get him for more like the 10% range. Uh, mm -hmm. right now and I think he's worth adding especially for this run he's going to go on let's get to uh, since we both have the same number one who's your number two wide receiver ad this week so my number two guy I got a bucket of these wide receivers that I think are worth picking up and stuff I think that Alec Pierce is a player that because Matt Ryan is struggling right now and people are going to write it off and things of that nature and say oh, it's the Colts passing attack I mean really do we want to invest in that but Five to seven percent of your fab is worth it for. We talk about these players, Joe. We talk about rookies on the back half of the season. Alec Pierce could be the next rookie to sit here and break out. We've already seen Garrett Wilson. We've seen other rookie wide receivers already do it. Alec Pierce is building. He's gaining steam and building momentum. He his route run rate popped up to seventy five percent this past seat uh, past week. He got a twenty one percent target share. He now has back to back games with over eighty receiving yards for a guy that. We saw him blow up the combine. He crushed it. We have a passing attack that is yearning, screaming for a number two to step up opposite Seriously. Michael Pittman. And quietly, he's been incredibly efficient with any volume that he's gotten to this point in the season. He's 27th in yards per route run amongst all wide receivers with 10 or more targets. That's right behind DK Metcalf and CD Lamb, Joe. So, yes, I think Alec Pierce is firmly worth a pickup. Yeah, I got to agree with you. He absolutely is. Um, in fact, as you're talking about, it, I've actually moved him up my ranks for the waiver wire this week. Um, I could not agree more. And this is, you know, when people in the preseason want to talk to me about Paris Campbell again, I just I, I roll my eyes and just like enough is enough. You know, oh, there's a reason L. why to me, there's a reason why the Colts decided that they weren't going to bring in any more people. They clearly needed somebody else to step into this void. They clearly had a void, a tight end to they're trying to figure out. Maybe there's a point where the Colts get back on track. I don't know. It's getting frustrating to watch Matt Ryan out there right now. I thought he would be better than he would. I thought he would be getting a second life like Philip Rivers, but yep. instead it's going in the other direction right now. So that is very perplexing to me. But Pierce is definitely a guy people should be looking at. Another guy somebody should be looking at, uh, all of you, really, Michael Gallup. Uh, rostered and still 60% of leagues on sleeper right now, but still 40% available. You got Dak eventually coming back. You saw some of the skills on small display yesterday in that game against the Rams, which, by the way, told you, told you, Cowboys are going to go out and beat the Rams. The Rams are not that yep. good. Sorry, people. Sorry. They're overrated. Uh, Cowboys with Cooper Rush beat the Rams, but Cooper Rush is not going to be playing quarterback wow. forever. And this is going to be an offense that is going to throw the football more when Dak comes back and Dak is going to come back. They're paying him too much money. Stop with the quarterback controversy. There's no controversy. Uh, so to me, this is another guy, five to 10% on Gallup, probably more like the 10% range because we're getting to that nitty gritty here. So to me, Gallup is a guy I want on my roster, especially with the bye weeks coming up. They've got a tough matchup against the Eagles coming up this week. We'll see if Dak is back for this one. It's going to be dicey. If he makes it back in time, they say they want a full week of practice for Dak. We'll see if we're going to get that. But again, it's only Monday morning. We're still trying to unpack last week and look ahead to the waiver wire. So Myers, Gallup, Pierce, let's keep going, Debro. Who's another wide receiver we want to add this week? Well, I've seen the role pop off. I mean, we just saw what Khalil Shakir did against the Steelers. And I'm telling you that Isaiah McKenzie should not be out there in leagues right now. He's only rostered in 47% of sleeper leagues. You need to be busting about 3 to 5% on him from your fab. For a player that we know that the Bills are going to throw, 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 and throw the ball, we it's attached to Josh Allen's arm. <laughs> McKenzie, before missing this last week with a concussion, had averaged 7.5 targets of the last two games. He was wide receiver 10 and 29. We've seen this Buffalo Bills offense produce three top 36 wide receivers, three top 40 wide receivers. McKenzie is talented, and he's been commanding volume. And maybe when he comes back, he splits routes with Sha Khalil Shakir. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe he just runs the full-time complement of routes out of the slot for the Bills. 
He's a player that, yes, I want to be attached and I want to cheat part of a top three to five scoring offense in the NFL and Josh Allen's arms. So, yeah, go get McKenzie. I don't know what the status of Knox is going to be for this week, but he was out this past week. I could tell you that if McKenzie so is out up, man. and Knox is out, Shakir definitely flies up my rankings more. Yep. As I, I put him on. as a stash in the, uh, the waiver wire column. In the, we- in the deeper leagues too. And it's funny because I've got a few dynasty shares and I play in some deeper dynasty leagues. We're talking like the 32 team where you get copies of everybody kind of stuff, like crazy stuff mm-hmm. like that. And Shakir was a guy that, you know, I watch a lot of college football. Debro does too. I hadn't seen a whole lot of, and then I watched a lot of the tape on him and I was like, man, I, I like this kid. And man, anybody that ends up in that Buffalo offense and you heard a lot of good buzz about him. If you're in a 14 team league, I think Shakir is a stash right now. You've seen Gabe Davis have the ankle issue. You've seen now on display in small sample sizes already in the season that this guy is pretty good and he can catch the football. And then last Sunday, obviously, certainly eye-opening performance for him too. With McKenzie's health being a question, with Crowder not being a guy, Shakir's a deeper add for sure for me. And he's I don't, what's his roster percentage? It's got to be super low. Is it like oh, five? It's got to be super low. It's he's got to be can't five. Imagine what it is. Um, let's go to another guy on my list. He's forty-six percent rostered. So people have been listening, but maybe not enough. Jameson Williams. I know you can't play him this week. I know it's a buy. They're coming out of the buy. They're coming out of getting shut out. Okay, we told you this was the trap game for Jared Goff. We talked about it all week. What do you know? It was a trap game for Jared Goff. <laughs> Who would have thought? Here you go. He is probably somebody you can drop 5% of your roster budget on, right? Your fat budget. Okay. He is a player that could have an enormous impact. I'm talking like, you know, I'm on Ross St. Brown is great, but we're talking about the big play guy. We're talking about the guy that has that potential to just destroy a game. Not that I'm on Ross can't do that, but he does it with volume. Williams is a guy that can do it with three catches. And I'm just telling you, this is a guy you want on your roster. Now's the time, as D-Bro and I are telling you, be proactive, not reactive. He is floating out there. He is practically free this week because of the buy. Nobody wants to add him this week. If you can, for next to nothing, do it. Do it fast. And then hopefully you have an asset. We talked about mid-November, late December. It could really be a game changer for you. So, D-Bro, your thoughts on Jameson Williams and adding him this week? I'm totally with you, Joe. I mean, I wrote him up in the waiver wire column as a stash, a high priority stash, because the fact of it is is that you look at what Detroit is doing, they're first in points scored, they're first in yards per play. You marry that with a defense that's also given up the most yards and points in the NFL. Detroit is going to have to continue to chuck the ball, put up points. They've shown that they can do this. And Jamison Williams, a talented player of this type of level of talent, that you can get off the wave of wire. We're talking about guys that can carry you to titles mm-hmm. down the stretch run and through the fantasy playoffs. I, I said it in the pre, I said it in the summer, Joe. I was like, Jamison Williams is ADP, never matched up with his upside. Where he is and still being on waiver wires should not be happening. So yes, I think that his upside to be a guy that carries you home down the stretch is absolutely there. People need to be stashing him now. Agreed. Look, let's just go add him now, especially because the bye week, that's the time yep. to get him for nothing. He is good because people are saying, I don't want to add him because he's not playing yet and it's a bye week. But if you've got the roster space, you got a great roster, do it. Don't be complacent. D bro, give me another wide receiver you want to add this week. Well, I know that we're worried about DeAndre Hopkins coming back, but I still think that Rondell Moore is worth an ad. Um, this, this Arizona Cardinals offense has looked putrid to this point, but we've seen where the fantasy assets crawl out of the woodwork. I mean, we saw a great Dorch season. Now that's been put on hold because Rondell Moore is back, man. So go get, go get him for three to 5%. You're probably gonna have to not even put in 5%. You could probably get him from one to 3% considering. I mean, over the last two weeks, uh, he's ran, he's played 90, he played 91% of the snaps in week six, 97% route participation. He went back to the slot and he got a 19% target share. He ended up with a stat line that looked very Dorch-esque. And, in PPR leagues, that's gonna play up, man. I mean, that's that's gonna equal wide receiver, higher end wide receiver four, low end wide receiver three, he gets into the end zone. You're looking at maybe wide receiver two production in PPR leagues. So for a player that this, they gotta throw the ball to somebody. DeAndre Hopkins is not back. AJ Green is dust. I think Rondo Moore is worth a pick up. And if you look at the upcoming matchups, Joe, Seattle, New Orleans, Minnesota, two of those three are plus matchups for slot wide receivers. 
because uh, Kobe Bryant has been terrible for Seattle in the slot, and Chandon Sullivan has been cooked on the regular. So I think it's really good spots where if you need a flex option, uh, Moore makes a ton of sense over the next two to three weeks. I've got a Moore as well, but it's not Rondale. Nope, it is Sky Moore. And oh, uh, again, I'm sticking. I'm sticking yes. with the theme here today, which is we're looking for players that can make impacts in the second half. Now that's what we're looking for. You're either fighting for your life or you're looking ahead into the future. That's what you're trying to do right now on the waiver wire in week six, because you are nearly at the halfway point. So you've got, you know who you are, you know, if you're a competitive team or not, you know, which one you are. So decide and use your budget accordingly to which one you've decided you've become what the identity of your team is. Guy Moore. Sleeper roster percentage, 28%. Uh, you could probably drop 3% on him. Now, again, it depends on what he does tonight. Maybe he starts to eat into the, the share a little bit more. But I look at the lackluster performances from everybody in this wide receiving core. I am thoroughly unimpressed from what I've seen from Juju, from MVS. Same old, same old from those guys. Michael Hardman, we've been down this road a million times. I can't do this anymore. There's one guy out there, and it's Sky Moore, who has this talent, has this ability, and I'm not going to fall into the trap of last year, which is writing these guys off in the first six weeks of the season because they're rookies and they don't pop. We can't do that to ourselves. That's how we blew Gabriel Davis last year. It's how we blew Amon Ross St. Brown last year, right? Because we just dropped these guys back into the pile because it wasn't happening, and guess what? If you had those guys through playoff runs, I know Gabe Davis was pretty late, but you saw it. So all the homework was right. It's all about the timing. Maybe you don't get the timing this year with Sky Moore. But at some point, there might be an injury. At some point, there might just be a performance issue. At some point, Sky Moore might get that opportunity. It's going to cost you nothing to find out now. 3%, 5%, you can probably get that done. Let's talk about the uh, QBs and the tight ends this week. Let's start with the quarterback. Uh, you and I both have the same guy, so I'm just going to let you talk about Geno Smith here. Chef Gino, what do we have to say here, Joe? I mean, he's QB6 in fantasy What's left points to say? per game. He's an above-average NFL quarterback. Yes. That's right. I said it. He's playing extremely well. He's a top 10 fantasy quarterback. He's only, I mean, just, he, Joe, he's just second in PFF passing grade and adjusted completion rate. Just second. No, no, no big deal. He's just, he's just playing okay. Geno Smith is not only a streamer, he's a guy that you should be picking up and looking at starting on a weekly basis, considering how bad, and, and yes, I understand the words that just came out of my mouth, but that's where we're, that's where we're at, people. Geno Smith is playing extremely well, and we need to give credence to it. And you look at the upcoming matchups that he has. You could stream him this week. Heck, you look at it. He's get, he gets Arizona. He gets the Chargers, who are bottom five in explosive pass rate allowed. And he gets the Giants. Mm -hmm. All three of these teams, he could have his way with. Arizona has been terrible. So you're looking at a, a defense this week. You're going to pl plug and play him. That is 26th in EPA per dropback. They're 32nd, allowing the highest explosive pass rate in the NFL. Yeah. Geno Smith should not have already, he should not even be on the waiver wire, Joe. He should be on people's benches already. Yeah. Uh, look, <laughs> I, I I never thought we'd get here. I got to be Me honest. Either. I mean, Geno, <laughs> Geno, you know, personality wise too. I mean, I live in the New York area, so I've, I've experienced, I've had the Geno Smith experience. Okay. <laughs> with the, with the Jets and the Giants, if memory serves. So like, you know, you get to a point where you just think, okay, you got to write it off, but you can't at this point. He has finished mm -hmm. as a QB one the last three weeks in a row. Just let that sink in. QB seven, QB two, QB three. I'm sorry. You're Crazy. still rolling Matthew Stafford out there in leagues. You're nuts. What are you doing? <laughs> And they got Arizona this week, and then they got the Chargers next week, and then they got the Giants, and then, oh, wait, Arizona again. This run that you could pick up Geno Smith in single quarterback leagues right now is crazy. Like, it's just something you you, you got to do it. You got to do it. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I know people are frustrated with Joe Burrow, too, right now, and a few other quarterbacks, mm -hmm. and rightfully so. If you are in that weird space where you're fighting for your fantasy life, I'm streaming Geno Smith next week. I'm just yep. doing it, D. Like Agreed. time for some hard decisions and some hard math. All right, tight end. Uh, Debra, who's your tight end to add this week? Uh, it's going to be Evan Ingram. Um, he's only rostered in 26% of sleeper leagues. Give up like 3 to 5% of your fab. The matchup this week against Indy is fantastic. He got a 21% target share last week, and Indy is 28th in DVOA mm -hmm. versus tight end. So not a guy that... Look, the results have not been pretty for Evan Ingram. I, he's coming off a game where he had a season high in receiving yards. He's going to run a ton of routes. The matchup is good. Stream him this week. All right. Me, it's Hayden Hurst. And a lot of people ask me, who do I pick up? Because Kyle Pitts is out. And I said, well, is Hayden Hurst still available? Because at this point, 
Somebody else is catching the football, and with T. Higgins' health, it seemed like a good bet. And guess what it was? So keep going. Just keep going until the well is dry. And at some point, it will be dry. At some point, Jamar Chase will be awesome, and Higgins will be healthy, and everything will be just peaches and cream, I think. Although it is a tough schedule for the Bengals this year. This is what happens when you get to the Super Bowl. You get that tough schedule. It's one thing when you're Cinderella, but now you're Cinderella and you got to play all the uh, the big step brothers. <laughs> no, no stepsisters here in this one. 37% uh, rostered is Hayden Hurst. Fab is, I don't know, 3% probably you can get him yeah. for, maybe five. You know, uh, I just think Hayden Hurst at this point, once again, you have to make these hard decisions. If you are a team that is two and three, and you keep running Kyle Pitts out there, maybe you play Hayden Hurst for the next couple weeks if you picked him up. But pick him up now. He shouldn't be out there. He's got that fringe tight end one appeal, and at this point, that's all you can ask for. We have some breaking news, D-Bro. Right here on the show, live as we're recording it, Tom Palacero is reporting the Panthers have fired Matt Rule. So I don't know what's going on with Baker Mayfield's health. Maybe we'll get P.J. Walker. Uh, the one thing I do know is that every single time you get this opportunity where a team fires their coach. They go out there and they win a game. Now, uh, this week, uh, D bro, do you know who they're playing? The uh, Carolina no, Panthers. I do not. Uh, the Carolina Panthers uh, this week, I'm going to pull it up. I want to say they're playing the Rams, my favorite target. Uh, yeah, they are. <laughs> oh, they're playing no. the Rams. And where are they playing the Rams? In LA. Not much of a home field advantage. Ruh -ruh. You can get three to one on this bad boy. I just talked about it on the BP show before we came in. I said, if Matt Rule gets fired, I am all in on this game. Just on the money line. Let's talk about the fantasy implications here. Matt Rule's gone. Uh, I don't know if it becomes Ben McAdoo as interim <sighs> head coach, but that can't be a good thing. So no. whatever that ends up becoming, I'll try to peel into it as more unfolds. From a fantasy perspective, the Matt Rule era is over. He'll go back to college somewhere. What does this mean mm -hmm. for CMC, for the quarterback position, and the future of DJ Moore? Woof. Um, I mean, it's <laughs> it's here, here's the thing. Matt Rule as bad as Matt Rule was, and I and I put a tweet out the other day, and I was like, why do teams let these lame duck coaches like what why why let him hang around? Why let him control your last draft class when you know that like if he sucks, this team sucks this year, he's gone. Like, what's the point of that? So as bad as Matt Rule has been, and he's been pretty epically bad, he still has not been the one playing quarterback. He still has not been one the one moving the offense or coordinating the offense. It's been McAdoo. Um, I don't think that it's going to be a lot better from prospects for DJ Moore. Now, well, maybe it ain't going to be McAdoo, finally... by the way. I just saw it's going to be Steve Wilkes, uh, who is currently the okay. defensive passing defensive game corner. coordinator yep. and secondary coach for the Carolina Panthers. So we'll see what Steve Wilkes can get out of this team. But well, continue if, on. If, if Wilkes is out there, the only thing I'll say as far as like quick takeaways from this is that maybe this team decides, okay, we're going to stop being stupid and get more of our best player involved. And with a defensive minded mm -hmm. head coach, it's CMC time, so defense from the football, baby. Yep, I think that. I mean, honestly, that's probably what we could get. Maybe we get a Matt Corral sighting too. That that's a possibility. Well, it's gonna take so, a couple weeks for him to get healthy too. You know. Yeah. So deeper super flex leagues, if he's out there, maybe you go pick him up as well. I don't think Corral's ready from what I've seen of Corral, to be honest with yeah. you. I don't think he's a guy you throw to the wolves. I think there's a better chance you see Sam Darnold play this year than you Ooh. see Corral. I really do. Ooh. I know you, everyone wants to oof that and rightfully so well, it's it's a worthy <sighs> but yeah at this point it's baker mayfield it's pj walker you know <laughs> oh God, so PJ, you might get pj walker this week pj walker new head coach running the football beating the rams i'm here for it oh, let's go wow. let's go uh, i am oof. the fantasy loki i love chaos i want all the chaos <laughs> give me the defensive ad of the week who are you streaming at d People um, could be surprised by me saying this, but they're out there. They're only rostered in 7% of leagues. Chicago Bears, man. Going against the Commanders this week. We've seen Carson Wentz implode uh, when teams can get pressure to him. Now, Wentz has been pressured at the second highest rate. He's absorbed the third most QB hits. The Bears are quietly 10th in pressure rate, and they have allowed the 8th lowest passing touchdown rate this year. So, while you might... You know, pinch your nose and say, oh, good Lord, why? <laughs> All the numbers line up for the Bears to walk away with a really good week as far as defenses go. No one will be surprised with my pick, but it has nothing to do with anything but good football. Patriots coming off a shutout. 
Patriots are playing the Browns. And to quote one of my favorites, MJF, the Browns are mid. They're mid. Okay. They're not special. So let's not go crazy about the Browns here. They're coming off a shutout. This defense is rallying around. They do what the Pats do, create turnovers. That's what they do. I don't know how they do it. I don't know how they continuously turn the secondary over from guys like Revis to Gilmore to J.C. Jackson. They just keep finding these, these guys, the Kyle Duggars of mm-hmm. the world, where people laughed at them when they pick. As good as they are on defense, it's as bad yeah. as they are drafting offensive players. But we got to give them some credit. <laughs> like we, I mean, the offensive evaluation of wide receivers is so bad. <laughs> But the defensive backs are just, it's incredible what they're able to do. And they keep finding these guys at these smaller schools and they get it done. Patriots are 19% rostered. I like them against Cleveland. I know it's on the road. I'm telling you, the defense is playing really well right now. Look what they it's... look what they did to Aaron Rodgers. Look what they did this past week to the Lions. And I'm telling you, they're going to do it again to Jacoby Brissett. Don't think that they're dumb. It's so funny. It's like Coach Bill has like beer goggles whenever they get to offensive players and stuff, but then he sobers up when they get to defensive picks. He's like, I, all, I right, don't all, get right, it. all right, all right. The Motrin is kicked Hand the in. the offense off to somebody else. Like, I mean, <laughs> could you imagine if you had a good talent evaluator? Uh-huh. Oh, I'm still trying to get over the A.J. Brown pass. Uh, let's go oh. to, for those of you who aren't spending fab but instead making waiver wire claims, let's go to the top five players that we want to add this week. D-Bro, kick it off for us. Give me your top five guys on the waiver wire. Kenneth Walker, number one, he's in a tier to himself. And then uh, as number two, Jacoby Myers, Mike Boone is behind him. Alec Pierce is number four. And rounding out the top five is Isaiah McKenzie. Not only is Kenneth Walker the sleeper app pickup of the week, but he is also, like you said, uh, in a tier unto himself. Not only that, he's Mm -hmm. a tier that I would trade somebody for that waiver wire number one tier just to get him. Tell him that's a deal I'm willing to make. So be aggressive, be aggressive be aggressive uh Kenneth Walker number one for me with a bullet then we've got Michael Gallup at two Jacoby Myers at three Jamison Williams at four I'm telling you I love this sneaky out of the week and Rashad White at five if you really want Rashad White you can split hairs there four or five doesn't matter uh but let's get to a little game called keep or drop and I'm gonna throw some names out some roster percentages on sleeper and D bro is going to tell me if I should keep or drop this person or whether you should keep or drop this person. I like to tell you that I only have, let's see uh, a couple shares of two of these guys. So, and they're again, disappointing. Uh, Julio Jones, 58% rostered uh, Julio's new nickname is going to be GTD because that's what he is every single week. GTD. So you want to drop a uh, Julio Jones here? 58% rostered. Is it time? You came up with a three letter acronym. I have another one cut. Ooh, there you go. That Bye-bye. also works. Cut. Done. DTM. Huh? Dead to me. Yes. <laughs> oh, geez. I'm, I'm cool. I'm hip. I, I know the slang with the cool kids say. Uh, Dawson Knox, <laughs> tight end, Buffalo, 71% rostered. Are we done? Are we, oh, is the Dawson? Gone. I mean, do we rather have Hayden Hurst for us a year? I can't believe he's still 71% Gone. rostered at this point. Gone. He's been banged up all year. I don't yeah. see maybe he gets healthier, but he's never been efficient. He lived off of touchdowns. I think those days are gone. Bye. Gone. The, the dude got paid too. Yep. Like I, that's great, but uh, it ain't him. working. You gotta find. You gotta find Conklin. You gotta find Hurst. You gotta find somebody yep. at tight end. Uh, Caleb Huntley. Last week we wanted to add him. He's only thirty percent rostered. Is the experiment over already, or you want to keep him another week and see? Oh, cut him. Uh, they 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 moved around a lot of p- parts and pieces in the Atlanta backfield. Damian mm-hmm. Williams probably comes back. Avery Williams is cutting into the routes. Then you have Algier taking over the early down stuff. Nah, get rid of Huntley. Zay Jones, 43% rostered. Cut. I mean, I, I, I get it, but Zay Jones falls into this, a similar bucket as a lot of these other wide receivers we're talking about, Joe. Like, mm-hmm. he gets targets... For me, he's not a player that I'm willing to just hold on to. Like when I could go out and get, say, a Jacoby Myers, Rondell Moore, Gallup, and just play matchups. Like that's what the bucket he falls in. It's just a matchup guy. All right. Last one here before we get to our listener mailbag and head out. Allen Robinson. I've got zero shares, but he's still Bye. 81% rostered. I just wanted to bring that up. On Sleeper, he is 81% rostered. Oh. And look at, like, Jacoby Myers was what? Still available in 40% of leagues. I don't know what people are looking at. I don't know what's going on here. It's they're married to their priors. They're saying, okay, I I have belief. (laughs) Because the people that drafted Allen Robinson in most leagues, Joe, it It was was, a leap of faith. You're right. It it was, it was, I am all in on Allen Robinson. Mm -hmm. I love him. A lot of it is just priors. It's people saying, I love this player so much that I want him to succeed. And I can't come to terms when he fails. Well, guess what? 
How many weeks do you have to see that Allen Robinson is dust before you're willing to sit there and pull out the broom and say, sweep, sweep, sweep away I mean, off the roster? Be, I would have thought it would be five weeks, but apparently you no. No, apparently no. not. 81% Bye. rostered. Mm, he is crazy. wide receiver what now? 82, I think, on the year or something like that? He might not even Because after be yesterday, high. it's got to be lower than it was going in. He was 77, I think, yesterday. I even looked at today. I can only imagine it's in the low 80s at this point. Got to be. I mean, I mean, 81% rostered. If you take to away the name of Allen Robinson, and I'll, I'll just say this. You take let's away the him, name of Allen Robinson and let's call him you, Alan, no way. Alan Dingleberry. Let's call him Dingleberry <laughs> so from yesterday's live stream, which if you missed the live stream yesterday, oh. again, it's so fun. Every so single good. Sunday we're there 1030 till noon in the morning on the Eastern time. And then, of course, we had uh, – extended version yesterday too with more of our fantasy pros fam taking over uh look man like i don't get it i don't get it i don't either i i, I it makes no sense to me because at this point all you have to do is just take the names out of the equation look at what the players are doing they produce or they don't roster them or don't and move on like you need to get rid of whatever priors or draft season fluff is left in your head and say he sucks <laughs> and he needs to go Patience is a virtue. Alan Robinson is an albatross. There you go. Uh, <laughs> let's go to our listener mailbag. Uh, of course, comes straight from our Discord, fantasybros.com slash chat, where all the chatting happens. It's free. It's fun. It's amazing. And again, if you go to fantasybros.com slash offers and you become a six-month free subscriber, the premium product here at Fantasy Pros, you get the waiver assistant, but you also get access to our Discord stages, access to our AMA channels, access to our touchdown call contest. So many cool things. This is a question straight from there, JMG24. Are we sticking with Hollywood Brown, who keeps delivering, or still looking to make a move for Lamb, Evans, or Pittman? Uh, Lamb, I would certainly be in for that exchange straight up. Evans is on the border for me with Hollywood right now, because I think in some ways Hollywood could maintain, because I think having to account for Hopkins and Brown, I think there's enough target share to go around for both those guys, the way this offense is structured, the way the defense is so bad. Pittman, I think I'd still rather have Hollywood. But where do you think about these three guys in exchange for Hollywood straight up? I, I would take Lamb, Evans, and Pittman over Hollywood. All three. I would take all three. And and this comes okay. down to uh, right now we're seeing the basement level of the Colts passing attack. Like, we I, certainly I doubt, are. I, I really don't think it's going to get worse I think that basement had, is taking on some water recently as well. I just want to point well, that out. It, but here's the thing. If this is the basement level, then what do we see if they figure things out? If Alec Pierce becomes a bigger part of this offense, if Matt Ryan starts to play better with the offensive pieces kind of maturing around him, that's possible. And I'm willing to go with any one of these three wide receivers based off of just medium target volume on a weekly basis. Because maybe Brown keeps his target share, which has been fantastic, but maybe Hopkins comes back, reassumes the number one spot, Brown, in an offense that right now, we just talked about it, Joe, like this offense is broken. Outside of his awesome target share, Arizona doesn't look good at all. No, Tyler no, doesn't just... look good at all. So I'm, I would rather go with the median target share in three different offenses that I think are at their, their basement level. Like Dak comes back, Lamb's going to play better. Uh, Evans is, is re-emerging as Tom Brady's going to the air more and Matt Ryan. And I'm going to say it, I don't think he can get any worse than he's already playing. So give me all three of these guys. I wonder how Kyler Murray would be if Sean Payton were head coach of that team. Ooh, that was fun. That right? would be interesting about, yeah. I mean, he's going to take a year off. You're kind of semi-retired anyway. Arizona's a nice place to live. Eh, just throwing it just out saying, there. Just saying. Just saying. Yeah, he's yeah. going to be back. I still think he's going to be back for the Cowboys. Oh, he'll we'll be back. Stay. Yeah, agree. <laughs> I still, agree. I still think that's where he's going. But yep. just saying, some uh, buddy with a real coaching pedigree of getting quarterbacks to that next level, I'd love to see Kyler Murray with that person. So we'll see. But hopefully you can add these guys to your waiver wire. Don't forget about the waiver assistant, too. That's also available at fantasypros.com slash myplaybook. You can download the myplaybook app or just go directly to fantasypros.com and get it there. Sync your teams. Win your leagues. That's what we're all about here. And, of course, we've got more waiver wire content at fantasypros.com. It's all written up, too, if you want to dig in even deeper to these guys. Go do it right now. That'll do it for us. But the story of the game goes on. For D-Bro, I'm Joey P. We'll see you next time, kids.